Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability. Your benefit of the course is you get basic understanding of the principle of the electricity network. You will understand the tasks and how they are assigned to the individual components of the electricity system. And I will give you explanations of typical solutions as state of the art. So this will not be an engineering course, but my explanations are based on fundamentals. So generally, understanding the electric system is based on two focus lines. Focus line number one is energy as a global quantity. Focus line number two is power as a local quantity. And today we concentrate on generation and power stations. So let's get started. In the first part of my lecture, I tell you about the conventional conversion processes. So generally the electricity system brings the power and energy from the electricity generation through the network to the users. But today we want to concentrate on the primary energy and how primary energy is converted into electricity energy. So there is the basic principle of the balance of power and can be related back to the law of conservation of energy. So which types of energy can be used to generate or to transform this into electrical energy. So there is thermal energy, nuclear, etc., etc. And we go step through step through this by showing which type of power stations are used for these. So let's start with a thermal power station, which is the most complex and most commonly used of these ways to transform primary energy into electrical energy. So to my right side, we see the picture of a thermal power station. And in this, from the end point of energy, we put in energy from coal, oil, gas, and flue gas. Part of this energy is released to the environment through the cooling water. And part of it goes out through the chimney, where also this is more or less lost energy. And something like 30 to 40% are converted into useful electrical energy coming out of the generator. So let's start with a circle of water of H2O in such a thermal power station. We start at the bottom right at the feed water pump. From there the water is put to the feed water pump on high pressure. And with this high pressure it goes through all the process until the turbine entrance valve. So here the pressure is raised and the next step of this process is the high pressure preheater. This is done to increase the efficiency by taking out some of the heat out of the middle of the turbine and bringing it back to heat up the water in a first stage. So the next stage is the real thing. This is the boiler. In the boiler, water is turned into steam. So after this, this steam, where some droplets are just put through, they are put through the superheater where the last droplet of water is evaporated so that the turbine only is fed with pure steam. So the steam turbine converts the thermal energy, the high pressure, high temperature energy of the steam into mechanical energy and then into electrical energy. And this drives the generator. When the steam comes out of the turbine, it is cold, it is relaxed, it is at low pressure. And here the last energy is taken out through the condenser, which reduces the steam to water. And this water is put via the condensate pump back into the feed water tank. So here, once again, we can see the full circle of the water from the feed water tank through the boiler, through the turbine, back to the feed water pump. Basically, except from the source of heat, is the same in a nuclear power station. So therefore, this explanation will be a little bit shorter. So if we have a nuclear power station with a type of the boiling water reactor, which is a simplified diagram, here we can see the source of heat energy in the reactor, which comes from the nuclear fission. And then this steam just goes straight into the turbine and comes out through the condenser, is circling around. So in red, we can see the steam and in blue, we can see the water circuit. So there is one disadvantage, as many people see it, in this simple construction, because 
this activated water runs through a lot of pipes etc and in order to avoid that the steam generator is put in between immediately after the reactor so in this steam generator this superheated water generates true steam and this steam is not activated and again it runs through this thermal process like turbine condenser pumps etc type number three of conventional thermal power stations is the gas turbine power station. So here we can see to my right side the simplified diagram of a gas turbine. So let's assume that this turbine is running and that is crucial as you will see a little bit later. So the turbine is running, it compresses the air, the fresh air supply and puts this fresh air supply into the combustion chamber. Here the fuel is added, it is ignited and it burns and out of this combustion chamber comes hot gases. These hot gases go through a turbine, a gas turbine in this case, which in turn again turns the compressor. So this is something like a feedback loop and from this gas turbine the hot gases are released in most cases into the free air into the atmosphere. Sometimes if we want to use it as a type of flue gas you can put a steam power station after this so that this hot flue gas goes into a steam power station and raises the efficiency of the overall circuit. These previous types of conventional power stations is thermally driven. Now let's come to type number four which is hydroelectric power stations. In a hydroelectric power stations we have a high water basin which is filled with water. The water goes through the turbine drives the turbine and is released to the bottom reservoir. While it does so, it generates mechanical energy, which is turned into electrical energy and power and is fed through the loads. So from the point of energy, the static energy of the water is turned into electric energy. And the efficiency here is quite high. It's something around 90%. So the last type of conventional generation and power stations are the wind power plants. Here you can see the schematic diagram. The wind comes from the left side, turns the blades of these rotating turbine. The mechanical energy goes through the gearbox and drives a three-phase generator in most cases. And this generator through a power interface puts its energy into the electric grid. If this power interface is a conventional transformer, we speak of a directly coupled generation. But it also can be what we call a converter. A converter is a little bit more complicated. So in such an inverter, the three-phase power, which comes out of the generator, is rectified into DC current and DC power. And from there, a chopper generates three-phase AC current, which is fed into the power grid. So for all these thermal and conventional conversion processes, we need a lot of pumps, ventilators, compressors, as you have seen. And here the auxiliary power supply for these conventional conversion processes plays an important role. Because if it is disturbed, the power conversion must stop. So to activate the auxiliary power supply for conventional conversion processes, we need as loads, for example, pumps for cooling water, general lubrication, for drainage purposes. We also need high pressure pumps, which are the feed water pumps, which by the way, in steam power plants are the most important and energy consuming auxiliary consumers. Then we need high pressure pumps for control mechanics and bearing lubrication, as well as motors for general purposes, like air supply, like ventilation. Also very important for the safety, and regular operation of these plants, control and protection devices, which again need electrical energy. And apart from that, we have general supply like lighting. So, and for cold start and normal operation of such a conventional conversion process, we need something between five to 25% of the generated power. And if in a case of a black start and a blackout, this energy is not available on site, such a power station cannot start up. So here you can see that these auxiliary power supplies play a very, very important role for the survival of our electricity system. So when it comes to 
generation and power stations, there is the part number two of this sector and these are non-conventional processes. In this case I will make it short, so here again are these primary sources and how the process is running and now we concentrate on the last three one, which nowadays are operated through static converters. These are wind power plants, photovoltaic plants and fuel cells. So in such a static converter, the physical energy starts from the source, which maybe is photovoltaic, which feeds DC power into this converter process. The DC current, DC voltage are turned into three phase voltage by means of numerical controlled switching circuitry, which can be classified as cyber physical systems. And from these, we feed three phase current into the power system. For this, please see section three phase current on converters of my course. So this was today's lecture about generation and power stations. I thank you very much for staying with me till the end of this section. And please come back again to my lecture about understanding the electric grid. Thank you very much and bye bye.